welcome and thank you for joining me on Geisha Chats. Oh, uh, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> we um we decided to wear rainbow colours today, didn't we? Yeah. For our interview. Thought we would match. We wanted to wear them for our lovely NHS, didn't we? Yeah, and to stay, to NHS. Look what one of my mum's friends brought me. Look at Mom. them! Hmm? They're Who are guys? Yeah, they're very cute. Who are they? They're NHS workers. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow! Did she make and, them for you? Yeah, and a big teddy as well. <laughs> and oh, look at that. He's a surgeon, isn't he, I think? Or, or a nurse that's in surgery. Yeah, and the name of the lady that made these is Granny Kate. Mm -hmm. Granny Kate, oh, is she your friend? Oh, look at that, Libs! Wait one second, I'm going to go and get my drawing. You got me, okay? Who? Yeah, I've got another thing to show you. What? My positivity stone. Oh, look, I love them. I love the positivity stones. You and your mum paint them, don't you? Yeah. And what are they for? They're for spreading positivity and spreading happiness. That's so lovely, isn't it? I wanted to show you my NHS thing that I've got. Ooh. From a lovely, friend, a lovely friend of mine called Donna, who's a nurse at the Royal Infirmary in Glasgow, right? Ooh. Look at this. This is so cool. <gasps> that's Whoa. her. Libby, that's actually her in the middle. Oh, she looks very pretty. Gorgeous. And she's a mummy. She's got three babies. And that's her team. They're real people. They're real doctors and nurses and staff and NHS staff from the Royal Infirmary. And they've got this um, website set up, right? And they're making up T-shirts. We bought a couple of things from them. We brought masks and a dress. For me when <laughs> well, this is the thing I wanted to tell everyone about. This is it. This is what you're talking about: is people, NHS workers, uh, who are selling things online to raise money. All the money goes to the NHS, so that's amazing that you're doing that as well. And this is the one from the Glasgow Royal Infirmary, and the team there have got a website, and we'll put it on the end credits so everyone can go and buy things to raise money. My first question: <gasps> Whoa. How? Are you feeling? How how are you feeling? Because it's a bit of a crazy time, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I've not got much sleep, so. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you feel like you're not sleeping like you normally do? No, everything just harder. But it's things like these, like talking through Zoom and all that, that keeps me happy. Right. So do you feel like at night time you're kind of, everything's going through your head and you're not getting to sleep? Yeah, well, something I do is I take a moment before I go to sleep and I do a couple deep breaths to help yeah. me just stay calm. That's wonderful. The thing is, it's not, it's not actually a bad thing that you're doing that because I think it's because you're quite smart and you're quite sensitive and kind, so you think about a lot of things. And that's what kind of keeps you awake, you know? See, people that don't have a lot of care and a lot of and a lot of sensitivity, they go to sleep like that. <laughs> they just go, oh, I'm going to sleep, I don't care. <laughs> so it's not a bad thing. Here's the lovely picture that you drew for me that's in my, my window. Uh. <laughs> it says, the greater the storm, the brighter your rainbow. Uh. Just and what does you. that? What does that mean? What do? You, how do you explain what that means? It means that whatever you're going through, it'll get better. Ah, that's so lovely. And I was really touched when you sent me that because it was right at the start of all this, and everything was a bit scary, and and that made me feel so much better. So yeah. pretty, isn't it? This little bit's hanging off because it's been on the window. So oh. gorgeous. So. Let's tell everybody, anybody who doesn't know, that what you, what you do, like what show are you part of and who do you play? I play Katie Ruff, 
and I work with the lovely Leah McCree. And where do we work? Where? BBC's River City. Yay! So, I was wondering, because it's quite unusual, isn't it? There's not a lot of children that get to be a part of a show like that. Obviously, I might ask you some things that you know I already know, but we want everyone else to find out, don't we? So, I'm wondering, how did it work? How did you end up becoming Katie? I had to audition. Right. Specifically for that role. Right. How did anyone know about you? How did they find out that you even existed? I was on an agency. Yeah, it was like a kind of... Was it a kind of modelling and talent type agency that you were part of? Talent agency. They go around a lot of the agencies and they ask if there's anybody that might suit that part, don't they? And so when you found out that, that your agency had been contacted... Then what happened? What did you have? What what? Because a lot of people won't know what an audition actually is, Libby. Like, what do you actually have to go and do in an audition? Talk us through it. You get sent some lines and oh. you learn them, and, oh. and yeah, and then you go down and then you perform them, and then if you if the producer and that likes what they see then you get to be part of the TV show. <laughs> That's amazing. Can you remember your audition? Can you remember who you read with? It was Martin. Martin McCarty is our series producer of River City and you were reading with him. And do you know, can you remember the funny thing that happened that you did in your audition that you tell everyone? So he's reading for you, but he's also watching you, isn't he, to see how, how good you are and what happened. Can you remember? So he was playing my uncle who had who had been away for a while and I was I went I just went on holiday as Katie. So I got to choose where I went. So I said oh, all right. I went to China and I went to all the Japanese toy stores. <laughs> He trained so much on me that he forgot his lines and I corrected them. (laughs) (laughs) And I bet they thought, okay, she can come and work for us. (laughs) She'll be able to do the work on River City. (laughs) So then you joined the show and I've got got a little picture here actually of some... Of your first family, of you and the oyster with with Sally, lovely Sally, how it, who plays Scarlet. Oh, but yeah. In the middle, there's you when you're not long joined with your on screen mum, a lovely yeah. Alana. And oh. then if you look over, you can see your on screen sister Louise, who played Frankie. Oh. And Dawn, and there's lovely Glenn, who played Greg oh. as well. Oh, we love Glenn. Oh, we love. Oh, I loved all of them. They were so sweet and fun. <laughs> What's it like when you look at them now? Does it feel funny to see them again? Yeah, it was long ago, so it was it's strange. Yeah, I bet it is. So yeah, you, but we when still, you... yeah, we still stay connected. Do you? Do you still keep in touch? Yeah. That's so lovely that you keep in touch. And that's the thing with acting, is that you make friends and you know that you've got them for life no matter what. Oh, that's so lovely. When you joined, because I remember I met you in the canteen and you were coming running past me and I went, hey, I've not met you yet. And you're like, oh, and you came running back and we were chatting. <laughs> that's the first time we were we became friends in the canteen because we both like our food, don't we, Libs? Yeah. <laughs> so we, were, we were in our happy place. <laughs> I bet I know what you were having. I bet you were having chicken nuggets. Yep. Chips and <laughs> chicken nuggets. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we didn't really work together because you had a, a family that you came in with and you were part of um, a, a massive storyline, which was oh. the death of Katie's on-screen mum. That was, that was a really big storyline, wasn't it? Yeah. I've got something very funny to tell you, Leah. You know how 
when I first went on to River City, my first scene, I had to say a bad word. And I was Did like, you? what? They must have got the scripts mixed up. But mum was like, nope, that they're the right ones. And I was like, oh, okay. So when I said that, it, it was a total surprise. What did you have to say? Can you remember what it was? Yeah, it was not a sweary word, actually. You, you can say it if mum lets you. You can tell me the line, if you can remember. I had to yell the word tosser. <laughs> <gasps> yes, you did. It was when somebody was, you were, you were coming out of a car or something, were you not? Yeah. Yeah, and it was him that Alex, funnily enough. Funnily enough, because he ended up, he ended up, you, you were around him a lot, weren't you? Because he was, he was your auntie's um, partner at the time. Yeah, and he was my uncle. <laughs> what was it like working with lovely Dawn Steele? Because Dawn Steele's a really well-known British actress and she's, she's incredibly kind and fun, isn't she? Did you enjoy yeah. working with Dawn? Because she, she was your auntie, wasn't she? Everyone in River City is so nice, and I think she's definitely super kind. She's lovely, isn't she? Yeah. Did you did you feel like you learned a lot from working with Dawn? Because she's very professional, isn't she? Very experienced. Totally. Yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it, how we work? I was going to ask you about um, what it's like for you, because obviously you're school-aged, so you have got to do your schoolwork also. So I was wondering about if you could tell everybody who might not know what happens, because not you don't only have to do your acting work, you have to do your schoolwork too, don't you? So I'm home educated, so whilst I'm at home, I get right. educated by my mum. We right. do lots of fun stuff. And when I've got I'm a picture of you, school, actually. got Ooh. a picture of you, look, doing your, doing your work at home. And told me to explain that photo a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so it was early in the morning and I was listening to music whilst doing my work based on the Zodiac signs. Wow. <laughs> and it was so much fun learning I'm about just, all the Zodiacs. <laughs> I'm just trying to have a little look at what you're doing. I can see that there, that you've got them all written down. I love learning about the Zodiacs. <laughs> The window <laughs> Jesse! Who's that? Who's that? Jesse! Can we see her? Will she come over and talk to us? Come on! There she, there she is! Come here, Jessie. baby. Jessie! Get comfy. Hi, Jessie! How old oh, is Jessie? She's seven. Oh, she's gorgeous, isn't she? Yes, she is exactly. beautiful. She's beautiful. She's trying to steal your scene, Libby. She's trying to get right in your shot, look. Oh, yeah. Just me. She's gorgeous. She is. She just... sees anyone in that garden bar me and my friends or my dad. She is just she... barking like there's no tomorrow. She thinks she's a guard dog, but she's teeny meeny, hasn't she? <laughs> High pitched birds just startle everybody. Yeah, at least she, you know, she's going to keep you safe, eh? Here's a picture of you and lovely. I think Margaret. this is, I think this is Margaret, isn't it? Yeah, we were and studying. That's you. Yeah, you can tell I'm a Shakespeare fan by all of the books. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Margaret, Aww. as I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> and we were reading Shakespeare books and studying maps. Right. What would, what would kind of happen then if you're on set? How does it work? When do you do your tutoring? So when I go off set, I go to this tutoring room and Margaret would stay there or she would look after me if she was my chaperone. Oh, okay, I see. I see. So she not only teaches you, but she also accompanies you on to set if she's chaperoning. And does every, is every tutor a chaperone or is it only some that do both? Well, only some, like my group. Okay. Okay. And that's a, an important thing as well. You have a chaperone, don't you, because you're a child. So you have a chaperone on set because it can be yeah. quite busy, can't it? And we need somebody to make sure that everything's okay 
specifically for you. It's really um, this really sad storyline of your of your mum, your on screen mum dying, and that was your first experience with probably real real drama where it's really sad because not only was your on screen mum dying, but in real life you were going to not be able to work with Alana again because you knew that the character was was going to was going to die unfortunately. So that was quite difficult, isn't it, for you to learn about? What? How did how did you feel doing that? I felt very very sad. Did you? But then again, I was very happy because I knew that she would go off to do things that she liked. And she went yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah that's... having a baby. <laughs> yeah, she's had a baby now, hasn't she? Yeah, had she's partner. married. Is she married? I was going to say, I'm not sure if she's married as well. She is, that's wonderful. Oh, she's not just got one baby, she's got two. <laughs> she's got two, and really interestingly, the baby has got two mummies, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, then you had another really difficult storyline where lovely Glenn, who plays your dad, Greg, his storyline was that he wasn't going to cope very well with his two girls and he was slowly unravelling, wasn't he? And he ended up, he actually ended up leaving his girls, didn't he? And then AJ was Katie's uncle because he was, he was um, Annie's husband. So AJ took Frankie and Katie into his home. Yeah. And I, felt, to... I felt happy then because I knew that, that, was... that it wasn't going to be the end of Katie and <laughs> I was going to go forward and have a lovely family. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was exciting for it was exciting for me because Ellie um, Ellie didn't have any children in the show and. Um, it was really nice for her to have a little, a little kind of child of her own, you know. And it was really nice because the Ellie and AJ were doing something really topical, so they were they were looking after a little girl who wasn't their own child. So she, they were kind of almost fostering her and taking her in, weren't they? Yeah. Which is what a lot of people do when when people lose a parent or something, they go through a hard time. And so it was quite an important storyline for us, wasn't it? Yeah. And now we have loads of fun, don't we? And tell me about Sanjeev Cody, yeah. because you love working with him, don't you? Yeah. And I can't wait to go back to work and be able to work with you again. <laughs> I know, it's, it'll be so much fun. Look, there's you and Sanjeev. Oh, yeah. How cute is that? <laughs> you can just see a camera in the corner there, actually, where that jacket is. Yeah. The camera behind that, but you love when you come on, when you come on and see Sand. You always come on and give him a big hug, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> you too. What yeah, he, yeah, me too. What is he? What is he like? What do you think about he's him? Very friendly, and he's very funny behind the scenes as well. He's really funny, isn't he? And I think yeah. he must be... Very, very cuddly as well. <laughs> I know. He gives you loads of hugs. And I think he must be a great dad, don't you? Because we don't see him being a dad. But at work, he must be a great dad to his... Because he's got two big girls now and a, and a, a younger his boy. He's, he's a bit younger. And he must, be, he must be a great dad, don't you think? I always think that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And he's quite cool, isn't he, Sanj? He's not... Oh, yeah. He's, like, a really cool... He's down with the kids, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's one cool dude. <laughs> What's your favourite thing about your job? What do you love most about being an actress? Mm, meeting so many awesome actors. Aww. And all the learning opportunities and making lifelong friends. Like oh, that's you, love. And it's just very nice. It's not always an easy job though, is it? What's hard about your job? I think what's hard about my job is, yeah, I don't like when I go and leave my dad and my brother. Yeah, because you, cause you live quite far away from where we film, don't you? Where do you live? For for Angus. So where, that's, I mean, you know the drive. You could probably do the drive now. You've done it that many times. 
you know how far away it is, Kate? Yeah, it's roughly two hours. That's long. So when you, when we're on a first call, if you've got a half past seven makeup call, then you need to you need to come and stay over the night before, don't you? Because it's two. You would need to get up really early otherwise. Yeah. So what do you do? You and mum, but you have fun, don't you? You and mum always go and watch a movie and stuff, don't you? What do you do when you, what do you do the night before when you get to the hotel with mum? Well, stuff I gobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite right. Quite right. Quite often you, when you finish, if you finish, um, if you've done a couple of days and you're going back home, if you're on a final call, you know, you'll go home after filming and that's quite tiring, isn't it? If you've been filming all day and then you've got a long drive ahead. I got snowed in once. That's right, but you had to totally... De- you always turn it into a positive, don't you? Because you had some adventure. <laughs> what did you do when you got snowed in? Yeah, all the staff at the hotel came out and threw snowballs and stuff and had the big snowball fight and we made snowmen and it was just yes. awesome. See? You make friends everywhere you go, Libby. <laughs> there was a staff member called Amanda. She was honestly an angel. And Aww. she's our best pal. And she yeah. didn't know what the snowman's eyes were. <laughs> they were eggs. Eggs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so if someone knocks it over, they're going to get splattered with egg. <laughs> Oh, oh my god! I anxiety leaving my dad and my brother at yeah. the house. This They've one come... time when we had uh-huh. gerbils, they left the cage open on the gerbils, and they managed to sneak about the house and nibbled some all of the cables <laughs> and, oh and dad's e-cigarette cable. <laughs> You can't trust boys, Libby, can you? You never trust boys to look after things. <laughs> You've got a big brother called Alfie, don't you? He's You're quite close with your brother. brother. He's what? He's the bestest brother in the whole wide world. Oh, that's so lovely. What do you love about him? I love, I love how clever he is and how, <laughs> yeah, and how cuddly he is. Some days. <laughs> <laughs> very, very protective. <laughs> is he? Is, does that make you feel safe? Yeah. And do you know That's... what I found in his bed this morning? What? A sleeping Jessie on the bed. She was oh. just like this. And straight as I walked oh. into the tent, like that, and just pounced about on the bed. Oh, <laughs> That's just... so cute. He's a lovely boy. Me and Alfie get on really well don't we when I come to visit normally I've tried to come up if you've got if we've got a break in the summer which is right about now I would normally try and come up wouldn't I it's such a shame we do what what do you always say to um (laughs) what's it all about Alfie (laughs) he hates it it, doesn't he Mm. just makes me do it even more He's a gorgeous boy. So I wanted to chat to you about struggles that we all have, different struggles, and what makes us individual and unique. And you have, so right now, you can tell us about what you've got, because you use things sometimes, don't you, like what you've got just now. Can you tell yeah. us what, what it is and what you, what you use it for? It's a bendy toy, and it helps me focus. Because right. I have ADHD and autism. Right. And what does that mean? What what does what does that mean to you? Um how would you how would you explain it to people to help them understand? My attention spans very, very little. <laughs> it's better than mine, Libby. It's much <laughs> better than mine. <laughs> yeah, very tactile. As well. You are, yes. But again, that's a lovely quality, isn't it? It's a lovely thing to have. So can you show me what you've got? Like, what kind of things have you got that you use? So I have a bunch of different... Wow, squishies. look at that. And what I else have, have you got in here? With lots of different sides. So that's uh-huh. buttons. Yeah. And 
that's very cool because it's a little divot that you can wiggle your finger in. Yeah, it's just a nice feeling. Yeah, and little spinny things. So do you feel like when you've got them, it helps you to it helps you to to not wander about in your brain almost. It's like it keeps you centered on what you're doing. We all get like that sometimes. You know, if you feel a little bit like there's too much energy running through and you just want to go like this. And some people do that a lot and you can, it's kind of like a release of energy, isn't it? Because you do that. You've got different ways of doing that. And one of my favourite things that you do is your little gallop that you do, don't you? <laughs> and I call you my little pony. Because you do a little, uh, when you get really, really excited or if you're, oh, if there's so much going on and you need to release it all from your body, you do a little a little gallop thing and you're like a little pony. And you also have a couple of other medical things. You speak really openly about it, don't you? Which is really endearing and very brave, I think. And part of the reason that you do that is because you like to support charities who raise awareness for different syndromes and different conditions that affect people and I think you stay, it's, it's to give people a better understanding of how everybody's different and it's just good to learn about other people, isn't it? Yeah, I've got Turner Syndrome, mm -hmm. which is a missing X chromosome. It also affects my height. And right. I have to take jags to get the growth hormones. And you've recently started doing something very brave in relation to your nighttime jag, haven't you? Tell everybody what you've started doing. Who who does your nighttime your nighttime injection? Oh, <laughs> I do it myself. <laughs> you do it yourself. I'm so used to it that I don't even notice anything's different. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Because you didn't used to be able to do it yourself. Used to be used to be quite upsetting when. And a bit worrying to have your injection every night, didn't it? Is this, this is it? it? Look, do you want to show everyone it? Let's have a look. Right, so that's the monitor, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not allowed to do it now. I do it at yeah. night. Yeah. And what, so the what screen you... will light up with a little image and it says hello. Right. And then I do the instructions to put the jack in and... Oh, I do it whilst having a freezer pack on my leg to help me not feel it as much. And then yep. this button turns green and I press it once it's on my leg. And that puts the needle into the skin. Mm -hmm. And it's quite, can, it's quite... I can show you it. It's quite a big needle, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite big. So that's amazing, and that's your injections for growth, isn't it? Because what 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 is it about growth? What's affected there? What's what's happening there? Do you know? It's about things about your your bones and your joints and things, isn't it? And it's hormones as well, isn't it? Yeah, I have a so patch in my hormones as well. Uh -huh. because you need a little bit more than, than people produce on their own, don't you? Yeah. And that's what that is. So it's basically things that are in your life and how much do you feel like they affect you? Do you feel, how much do you think that they, they make a difference? They don't affect me very much. <laughs> you you. You're just you, aren't you? You just go about your about your life and it's part of who you are. Um, my legs get tired more easily as well. Yeah. And my back gets very, very, very sore at night. Because I have... What's it called again, Mum? Right, let's talk about that one first. Oh. You have the George syndrome. I have the George syndrome. And there's this lovely yeah. child called Max Appeal. Oh, Max look. Yeah. And this is Beer. And that, that is that a charity for the George that supports the George and, and yeah. raises awareness as well? And it's lovely because they're the charity that gave us the trip to the castle. <laughs> that's amazing, isn't it? And that's and why... The race goes to help people with the George syndrome. 
yeah, that's why it's so important, isn't it, to chat about them. And then at the end of this, we'll put, we'll put down some links to the charities. You can get mum to send me some links and we'll put them in the credits because these charities support you. They support other people, don't they? And they help to, re they help to make people understand that it's okay. It's okay to have, to have things like this going on in your life. And it's not, it doesn't make you any different to anyone else. It's everybody's different, aren't they? Everybody has things that are different to each other. And it's just how we have to adapt to deal with different things in our life. But you are very brave because you do have a lot of things that you have to deal with that some children don't have to deal with. When I'm nervous about going to the hospital, I tell myself that it could be way worse. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm lucky to be where I am today. That's the best way. You're the most, one of the most positive people I know. Do you know that? Ah, thank you. Super positive. And if ever I feel frightened or upset, then you make me feel better. It makes me <laughs> cry. Look, I'm going to cry again. Aww, I always cry, don't, don't I, when I'm talking to you? <laughs> don't cry, Leah. Happy tears. Finally, I can show you what this does. Okay, give us a... Oh, look at that. Mm. And, and it tells it you... How many days I've got left on the cartridge of the medicine. <laughs> that is so high tech. And that's the medicine in the side there. You can see it, actually. And that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. The and there's the needle. Wow. Turn it to the side. Oh, to the sideways. That's it. That way. Oh my gosh, look at that. So the needle's about that long. Yeah, the needle's about there to there. Very long, isn't it? Because I've seen it before. Very long. <laughs> but you're so brave doing it. Right, let's talk about some, some exciting things. Let's talk about you, what you want to be when you grow up? What would you like to be? Do you want, do you want to be an actress or do, would you like to be something else? I feel like I want to be like you. Like I want to be able to do shows and acting as well. Really? So you'd like to be on the stage and in television? Yes. Wow, because you do dancing, don't you? You go to dance classes. And you also love playing music, don't you? You've got a ukulele and and you love singing. And I can play the keyboard as well. There we go. See, a master of all trades. <laughs> so what what would you say if, if I asked you what your what your dream is? If you could picture in your head one thing just for you, nobody else, just Libby's dream, what would you picture in your head of you doing? Mm, my dream would be it would be doing a show with you. <laughs> oh, a stage show. Mm. That's amazing. But what about a dream a dream just of yours with nobody else, just about you and what you want in your life? What's your big dream? Um I don't know. I would probably I would probably start a charity is to help all of the charities that have helped me. And there's lots of dreams that I have that I just can't choose one. Do you want me to tell you why you're so amazing? Do you want me why? to tell you? Because I've just tried to ask you something about you and I've asked you three or four different ways and you can't do it. Do you know why? Because you're so kind. And you always bring other people in, and that gives you so much joy, doesn't it? <laughs> You're making me cry again. <laughs> You're the kindest, most beautiful little soul. I'm so lucky, so lucky to get to share the screen with you. And I'm so lucky to be your friend, and I'm so blessed to have you in my life. Libby Dye, thank you so much for